Shalom. So first of all, I want to thank uh, Mikael and uh, everyone involved in the, the operation of the Meetup. I think it's really cool that we organize these kind of events. Uh, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dario. Uh, I'm originally from Italy and I work in Switzerland in Platica, work as a data scientist. And today I'm going to present you the Platica recommendation engine that we developed. Uh, I will repeat some of what uh, Shaiman all said. Uh, but from a different angle, from a different perspective, with uh, an industrial application. Uh, so this is the agenda of my talk. I will start by an introduction on the business question, uh, and I will dive into recommendation system and multi-arm bandits, and then I will conclude by showing you PyBandits, the uh, Python library that we developed uh, at Platica, and how we actually put bandits in production in a real industrial scenario, so the AI infrastructure behind. Uh, so the first question that we ask ourselves is how do we ensure that we that our use that we provide a fun experience to, the, to our user? The answer to this question is personalization. So we use AI to personalize our game. We use AI to tailor the games for the specific user preferences. This is this is the current situation at Platica. We basically have a lot of games which produce a lot of data, a lot of real-time events. We catch this real-time event to, with the AI platform, and we use our recommendation engine to provide a full, uh, experience, a full uh, personalized experience for the user. The idea is that the, uh, this is an iterative process. This means that we continuously gather feedback from the user, and we fine-tune the recommendation engine with the user preferences. Uh, how do we do that? We, so first of all, let's just step back. Uh, let's talk about recommender system. Recommender system in the, is uh, something that we, we use all the time in our daily life. An example is a playlist generator, I don't know, like uh, movies with Netflix, uh, songs, music with Spotify, YouTube videos. We have uh, banner placement, it's also another type of application, or uh, e-commerce uses a recommendation system. So basically, even if we don't know, we use a recommendation system. There are different kind of recommender system and different approaches of a recommender system uh, that I've been studying in the, in the literature. One of the, uh, the most known is a collaborative filtering that uses the past user item interaction to predict, to recommend items. What does it mean? It means that we look at the user history, we look at the uh, similar decision made by other user, and we give recommendation according to this. This suffers for a problem, so the cold start problem, which means that if there is a new user to the game, you basically you can't you, you don't have a history and you can't recommend. A solution for this is a content-based filtering, with whom you basically use also additional information about the user and the item itself, such as the age, such as the uh, the country, and the, you, you, or for the items or such as a uh, movie genre. You use this information to recommend uh, uh, the items. On the other hand, we are, will focus more on the bandits as recommender system, multi-arm bandits, uh, which basically in which basically you learn from the observing outcome. What does it mean? It means that you you suggest some recommendation, you see how the, how do you user react to this recommendation, and you uh, adjust your uh, recommender system accordingly. Multi-arm bandits, uh, as it was described before, even if I didn't understand, <laughs> is, a, is a, a very a specific, uh, can be seen as a simplification, as a, a very specific case of the more general reinforcement learning framework. And so it has to face the uh, sequential decision-making uh, uh, dilemma, which is exploration versus exploitation. Let me do a joke. So as I said, I'm Italian, I'm, uh, I'm from Napoli, I love the pizza. Uh, if you're in a pizzeria, what do you choose? Do you choose the best, the pizza that you know it's the best? So do you choose a margarita? Or would you go for a very gourmet pizza, something uh, very weird that has potential to be good, but you don't really know? Anything okay. <laughs> good, uh, good to answer. And so basically this is exploration versus exploitation. Exploitation means to make the best decision given your current knowledge. So you choose the margarita. Exploration, you are willing to take suboptimal option, suboptimal decision, 
So you want to take short-term sacrifices in order to make the best decision in the long term, overall. And what is the purpose of doing so? Is to collect more information, to gather knowledge. Multi-armbandit was introduced with this very canonical example, uh, from which actually the bandits took his name. So the word of slot machine. A slot machine is also referred to sometimes as a one-armed bandit. And so the idea is that you have an octopus. So the octopus represents the RL agent. And you have a series of slot machines. So the octopus has to pull the arms of the slot machine. The slot machine will give you some payout. It will give you some rewards. And the, the, point, the whole point is to, uh, to it for the octopus is to learn a policy in order to maximize the, uh, the reward in the long term. So you, and the, the fact is that you don't know what is the probability of the distribution over each slot machine. So you don't really know which slot machine is more rewarding and which less. And so the octopus has to learn which one are more rewarding. Let's try to formalize a bit what I just said. A stochastic multi-embedded framework, you have a set of possible actions, so-called arms. You have, for each action, an unknown probability of reward. So when you select an action, you don't really know what is the reward that you get. This is what you try to learn. And the, the, the framework is the following. At each time step t, the agent, our octopus, selects an action and collects the reward from the environment. So the idea is that by continuously, iteratively doing so, so you learn a policy, and you want to maximize the reward in the long term. You are not interested in the reward in the immediate reward, but you want to maximize the reward in the, in the very long term. The stochastic multi-bandit framework can be easily extended to the context plot if at each time step t, you add the notion of a context. So you have a context vector that you get, that you get at each time step t. And so you introduce the concept of state, which leads to the more general reinforcement learning framework. There are many bandits algorithms that have been studied in the literature. Uh, some of them are based on random exploration. These are very naive. Greedy is, a, you can see it from the, from the word. Greedy, you always take the action that you think it's the best. Always take the action. So you only exploit, you never explore. And epsilon greedy, by epsilon greedy, you, by default, you take always the best action. The action, not the best, the action you think it's the best. But with a small probability epsilon, you take a random action within your set of actions. There are more sophisticated approaches that are available in literature, uh, such as UPC, Upper Confidence Bound, and Thompson Sampling. Uh, I will describe a bit more Thompson Sampling because it's the one that we actually used. But the main difference between the frequentist and Bayesian is the fact that with the frequentist approach, you do not make any assumption on the probability of the reward. With the Bayesian approach, you make some assumption a priori for the uh, rewards probability. The Bayesian bandits framework works uh, uh, as follows. So it basically uses Bayesian inference to model the probability distribution over the rewards. And the idea is that you inject prior knowledge for reward and action. This is a very powerful tool because prior knowledge, what does it mean? It means that if you already know that an action could be more rewarding, you can inject this information into the model. And then you use posterior distribution to guide exploration, so to guide the choice of the RL agent. This is a, a visual example of what's happening behind the hood in the algorithm. Uh, in here, this is a snapshot at time t. And the question is, which action should we select? We have three actions, as you see. Action one, action two, and action three. Uh, these are the None of the, these are not the probability distribution of the reward, but these are our belief. So what we think are the probability distribution. And the fact is that if you see action one, the probability distribution here is very narrow. What does it mean? It means that we try this action multiple times, and uh, we, we are more sure about the reward that this action will get. On the other hand, for action two, we are less. And for action three, even less. You see that the distribution is very large. This means that we uh, try this action just a few times, and we don't really know what this will get. And so to come back at the, at the point of exploration versus exploitation, 
If you want to exploit, we take option one, the one that we are more sure that gives the, the highest expected reward. If you want to explore, we take option three, because we are more uncertain. And this is the concept of optimism in the face of uncertainty. You take the action you are the most uncertain about. So Thompson sampling implements optimism of uncertainty by uh, using a probability matching. And so the main idea is that you have a prior distribution over some vector of parameter, let's call this theta. And as I said, at each time step t, you receive a context. So this is optional only if you are in the contextual uh, bandit framework. Then you sample from this uh, vector of parameter, the sample the vector of parameter from the uh, posterior distribution. You take the action that maximizes the expected reward. You observe the actual reward from the environment, and then you update the posterior distribution from the data that you got. The main concept, the, the most difficult part here is this one, the update of the posterior distribution. Uh, sometimes it's not easy. In our case, for uh, the contextual bandit, we solve it uh, via a Markov chain Monte Carlo simulation. Now I want to talk about uh, a concrete example of uh, what we actually developed uh, and we implemented. So we uh, implemented PyBandits. PyBandits is a Python package uh, that you actually released as an open source product on the GitHub. Uh, it has a stochastic and co contextual multi uh, bandit implementation. Uh, behind the hood, it uses PyMC3, which is the most well-known uh, Python uh, library for Bayesian inference. Uh, we also implemented a, simul a simulation framework, which means that you can try the algorithm after, under different action, the reward, and context uh, settings. And it comes with the documentation and, and tutorial. This is a demo of the library. Uh, very simple one, I want to show, uh, in this case I'm uh, importing the stochastic multi bandit I define some actions, I, uh, I initialize the, 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 the model with the, the action set, I make some prediction, in this case I make 1,000 uh, 1, samples, 1,000 uh, predictions, and basically after that you want to update your model. So for each prediction, you see, in this case, we are simulated the reward because it's, uh, it's a toy example. So I randomly simulate the reward. So I random simulate the number of, uh, uh, number of successes and the number of failure. And then once you collect the reward from the environment, you can update your model given the, uh, the, the action, the data that you have. So the action, the number of successes and the number of failure. In this case, for instance, we see that action A was not very successful, while action B was uh, successful. And the idea is that by iterating this process, the model will learn and will adjust in the direction of the action that are the most rewarding. Uh, to conclude, I want to talk about the infrastructure around five bandits. So how we actually put bandits in uh, production in a real industrial uh, scenario. Uh, so this is the actual infrastructure. We develop uh, a streaming uh, real-time pipeline. The, uh, the infrastructure is divided into two parts. The first part, which is the feed-forward part, it's a real-time system uh, that has to answer to give result in the order of milliseconds. It must give result immediately because if the result comes late, they are useless. They have to be discarded. The, the AI infra uh, was uh, developed with auto-scaling capabilities via Kubernetes. It is implemented with a full decoupled microservice approach. It's not specific to one use case, it's very general. It has real-time monitoring system. This means that if we have an anomaly, if we have a problem, we are immediately notified and we can act immediately to solve the problem. And in the end, it's part of a larger infra ecosystem of, uh, of Platica. We have to speak with all the infra of, uh, internally to Platica. We use a lot of infra that was developed by Platica, all the Kafka, Kubernetes, all the AI-related stuff, such as the feature store, such as the deployment platform. Uh, so just to conclude, the main uh, takeaway of my presentation are, uh, so what we talked about today was how we used uh, AI to implement personalization for, for the users. Uh, I showed you PyBandits, a uh, Python library for multi bandit that implements the stochastic and the contextual bandits. And then I showed you how we actually put bandits in production in a real industrial scenario.
Uh, this is the core team who worked on the project. Many more, pe many more people uh, are involved, obviously, and I'm here in behalf of everyone to, to present this work. Thank you very much. Uh,